Have you ever seen your reflection on a water surface or in a glass door? Have you ever observed that along with the reflection you can see through the water surface or the glass door? Hmm, why would this happen? You can see both the reflected as well as the refracted ray, correct? Indeed, whenever light encounters a change in the medium, a part of it passes into the new medium that is, undergoes refraction. But then, the boundary between the two media acts as a mirror and reflects some of the incident light. Let us try to observe this in our laser experiment. When the laser beam passes from air into the water, along with the refracted ray, we can see the partially reflected ray. Let us now pass the laser from water to air and see if we still get the reflected ray. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that although the light passes from denser to rarer medium, a part of it still gets reflected? Let us now change the angle of incidence slowly and see what happens. The refracted ray bends outwards and outwards until a point that it goes along the water surface. And then if we further increase the angle of incidence, the refracted ray vanishes. There is just the reflected ray carrying the entire light that was incident. Isn't it amazing? This phenomenon is called as total internal reflection. The name explains what happens in this phenomenon, right? The angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees is called the critical angle. Beyond this angle, there is no refracted ray. The entire light gets reflected into the denser medium. What this shows is that if the angle of incidence is maintained to be greater than the critical angle, then the light would never escape the denser medium. Can we observe this trapping of light? Take a plastic cup and make a small hole towards the bottom. Then fill it with water. Now, as the water jet is coming out of the cup, shine a laser on it by aiming it at the opening. Observe the water jet carefully. What do you see? The light ray keeps being reflected from the surface of the jet and thus follows the jet. With this experiment, we ended up transporting light through the water jet by making use of total internal reflection. Isn't it amazing? What we just did is a demonstration of optical fibers, which are used in modern signal communication. Optical fibers comprises of several layers of materials where optically rarer materials are on the outside. Light carrying information from the signal passes through the innermost layer of the cable and is trapped inside the cable due to total internal reflection, just as the laser in this experiment. Diamonds All of you must have seen beautiful pictures of diamonds, correct? Why do you think diamond is so precious? Well, because it is so shiny. But then, it is transparent, isn't it? What makes it look so shiny? Have a look at the refractive index of diamond in the table in the textbook. It has the largest value, doesn't it? Hmm. Is this related in some way to the diamond being so shiny? Yes, indeed. Due to such huge refractive index, light ray bends a lot when it enters the diamond. Now, once it enters the diamond, as long as it is incident on the next edge at an angle greater than the critical angle, which is only 24 degrees in case of the diamond, it keeps undergoing total internal reflection multiple times. So, the light that enters the diamond gets reflected multiple times at the flattened surfaces and then comes out uniformly from all the directions, thus making it look so shiny. Interesting, isn't it? Now. Have a look at the textbook to find out about the marvelous natural phenomena of rainbow and mirage as a result of total internal reflection and refraction.